Warning, this video may cause you to never want to eat sugar ever again. So you might want to pause this video and get your last dose before I reveal some very interesting information. And of course, the more aware you are of what sugar does, the less you're going to consume it. I, I watch people all the time around me just consuming massive amounts of sugar, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how could you possibly do that? Well, it has to do with awareness. They just don't know the effects. Now, we probably all know the effects with weight gain and dental decay and a fatty liver and high cholesterol and acne and high blood pressure, increased candida infections and lowered immune system, et cetera, et cetera. But there's some other things that I want to share with you deep inside your body that uh, you need to know about. And it all relates to most diseases are metabolic diseases. What does that mean, metabolic diseases? It has to do with your metabolism. And when we're talking about metabolism, we're specifically talking about this one structure in our cells called the mitochondria. Mitochondrial dysfunction is responsible for the majority of non-infectious diseases. Dysfunctional mitochondria are what's behind cardiovascular disease, cancer. In fact, with cancer, you have normal cells that turn into cancer cells because of damaged mitochondria. It's impossible to get cancer unless you have damage to the mitochondria. Alzheimer's, which is type 3 diabetes, kidney and liver disease. All of these general metabolic diseases, if you look closely at what's happening as a common thread, deep inside the cell, we have dysfunctional mitochondria. There are a lot of things that destroy the mitochondria, but at the top of the list is sugar and foods that turn into sugar very quickly, like refined carbohydrates, like starches, breads, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, muffins, things like that. And when we talk about sugar, the majority uh, sugar in the U.S. is beet sugar. And the majority of beets grown in the U.S. are GMO. So we not only have this refined sugar, we have this um, GMO-type sugar, which has traces of glyphosate, which is an herbicide, which I'm not going to even go there, but I just want to make you aware of that. Um, also, the amount of fructose that we consume from drinks, sodas, high fructose corn syrup, um, is a lot different than glucose, okay? So we have fructose, which is only metabolized by your liver. All the other cells in the body can't metabolize this, this fructose. So when you're consuming large amounts of fructose, um, you are overwhelming the liver and overwhelming the mitochondria deep inside the liver. And so if we compare fructose with glucose, uh, glucose is actually much better than fructose. But you have to realize even table sugar is half glucose and half fructose. Honey, the same thing. And when we consume this refined sugar, uh, it's very, very unnatural because we don't have the normal antioxidants that come from like the natural uh, sugar that with sugar cane or even that come with fruit when you consume fruits, which is high in fructose. So how does that relate to the mitochondria? Well, this is what happens. When you consume uh, a lot of uh, sugar, glucose, or things that turn into sugar, what happens to the mitochondria is it becomes damaged. Okay. Now, the purpose of the mitochondria is to turn fuel into energy with the help of oxygen. And so now with a dysfunctional mitochondria, we now create a hypoxic, low-level oxygen state. And from that, starts to be created other oxygen molecules that are very reactive to our bodies. Without getting too technical, the category of these things are called ROS. And I don't want to get into complexities, but just realize that when you have a mitochondria that is not able to use the oxygen, you start developing a lot of oxidative free radicals and a lot of things that create more damage. And they're created because we don't have that oxygen. So they're uh, derivatives of oxygen that are highly reactive and damaging to your cells. And so it's those oxidating factors that create the complications of glucose. They create the damage from diabetes, for example. They create mutations inside the DNA of the mitochondria. Mitochondria are very interesting. They have their own DNA. And real quick, the history of mitochondria is they're 
bacterial derived. A long time ago, a bacteria morphed with cells to form this symbiotic relationship that apparently, over a long period of time, ended up in our bodies. So the mitochondria, the energy factories in our cells, actually originated from bacteria. And apparently we formed an agreement with them that they specialize in producing energy and uh, we'll feed them, okay? We'll eat and feed them and we'll give them a home, but they give this this focused machinery uh, to produce energy. And they also have their own DNA. But when we consume too much sugar, we get damage of the mitochondria, we get hypoxia, a lack of oxygen, we get uh, mutation within the DNA of the mitochondria, we get decreased numbers of mitochondria, we get uh, a lack of fuel produced by the mitochondria, starving off your cells, as in Alzheimer's, for example. If the mitochondria can't work, you can't produce fuel for the cells. And what happens in cancer is the cell, as a survival mechanism, gets its fuel outside the mitochondria in other places. A different pathway. It's very rudimentary. It's very uh, crude. And there's not much energy generated from that. And so the cancer cells have to compensate by hogging up as much fuel as they can. And sugar is one of the fuels that they go after hardcore. But there's a tremendous amount of um, oxidative stress, they call it, um, that's produced from these damaged mitochondria. And the oxidative stress is kind of like this high level of oxidation with at the same time a low level of antioxidants. And this is why when you consume a lot of refined carbohydrates, you're getting in this refinement process a lot of sugar, but without all the protective mechanisms that normally come in nature, like antioxidants, that can normally counter all this oxidation. And so that equals inflammation, cell damage, and especially damage to the mitochondria itself. There's something else that's really interesting that happens when you consume sugar. You get a decrease in what's called uh, mitophagy. Now, what is mitophagy? Well, there's a condition called autophagy, which is the recycling of old damaged cells. And that's a good thing because you, your body goes into the state where it can clean up damaged mitochondria and replace them with new mitochondria. And then that, that's a really good thing to prevent cancer and avoid all the complications that happen with damaged mitochondria. But sugar inhibits that ability for your body to recycle mitochondria. And maybe you've heard of the test from diabetes, it's called A1C, right? Um, that measures the amount of damaged protein in your blood. It's he damaged hemoglobin. Because when you combine all that high level of sugar with the protein, you damage it. That's called glycation. So that glycated protein, that damaged protein, can't be cleaned up as effectively with the sugar in your bloodstream. So that leads to a whole bunch of problems. And then now we have a... Um, hypoxic state in the mitochondria, which increases the risk for getting cancer. It uh, now has to generate a lot of lactic acid that can build up in your cells. You get a severe uh, deficiency of thymine, B1. Now, B1 is probably one of the most important nutrients in the mitochondria to allow everything to work correctly. The more sugar that you consume, the more B1 or thymine that you need. And so when you consume a lot of sugar, you deplete your B1 reserves. And what comes next is, is devastating, especially in the case of a diabetic. Their complication is peripheral neuropathy, mainly due to this uh, B1 deficiency that creates a lot of nerve damage. And so this is why one of the great remedies for peripheral neuropathy, which is the bottom of your feet becoming numb or tingling or burning, or your hands, is taking B1. B1 will pretty easily resolve that, that condition, or at least that complication from the high levels of sugar. But also with a B1 deficiency, there's a lot of other problems that occur too. An anxiety state, a lot of nervous tension, a lot of excessive thinking, insomnia, nerve damage in other parts of the body, and uh, also damage in certain parts of the brain that have to do with memory. And then another thing that gets depleted in the mitochondria from eating a lot of refined sugar is zinc. And zinc is also needed to make sure your mitochondria are, are bulletproofed or protected. And without zinc, you get dysfunctional mitochondria. So you just might want to think about the next time you eat that Krispy Kreme donut or that candy bar, 
you have to just be aware of what this sugar does to the deeper mitochondria in the cells that set your body up for a cascade of issues down the road. So the question now is, what can we do to improve the mitochondria? Well, the number one thing you should do is go on a low-carb diet. It's called a ketogenic diet. Cut out sugar. Cut out these refined carbs. You're going to feel better immediately. And you'll probably find that you won't be depleting your B1 anymore or your zinc anymore. And also, there's other nutrients that you won't be depleting anymore too. The next thing is exercise, especially high-intense interval training. But other types of exercise will also be beneficial to boost your mitochondria. And this brings up another point about athletes that are doing all sorts of like long distance marathons or triathlons. Um, they typically consume a lot of carbohydrates and a lot of sugar. And you might be saying, well, how come they're able to do this with all that sugar? Well, exercise can overcompensate and exercise alone stimulates the mitochondria. Exercise protects the mitochondria. Now, of course, I don't recommend that as you know, something that you can do to continue to eat sugar, because I know a lot of athletes that when they consume the sugar, they, they have a lot of side effects. They have a lot of problems and complications. But the point is that because exercise strengthens the mitochondria, it tends to nullify uh, some of the complications from the high level of sugar. Now, you might also be thinking, well, what about the people 100 years ago? They were a lot healthier um, than we are now. And yes, they were healthier, but they weren't a lot healthier. But I will say in the last probably 40, 50 years, um, the amount of sugar has increased, the amount of fructose has increased, the amount of snacking has increased, the amount of added sugar has increased, and all of that has been devastating. But think about even like several thousand years ago, were people eating healthier back then? Um, not necessarily. They've extracted um, these mummies and they've looked at the teeth and the arteries and the bones of certain mummified bodies. And they had periodontal disease. They had cavities. They had uh, problems with their teeth, problems with arthritis. And they consumed a lot of flour products, breads. So this is not necessarily just a new thing. Uh, it's been going on for a long time. Now, another thing that can help improve your mitochondria, if we were to look at like cold water immersion or cold therapy. It's the cold therapy, okay? The very uncomfortable taking the cold shower or the cold bath immersion that can stimulate your mitochondria way more than heat therapy or saunas can, simply because of how uncomfortable it is and also how our bodies were developed to survive during winter time and actually increase more mitochondria when we get cold. Nowadays, everything's become very, very passive and comfortable, okay? We get to eat 24-7. We get to stay in a really nice environment inside our homes, not out in the sun. And by the way, being exposed to the sun does increase your mitochondria. And not eating so frequently, as in fasting, greatly stimulates your mitochondria. Certain epigenetic, shorter, stressful things can improve our mitochondria, like going into a higher altitude or training in a higher altitude can stimulate um, your mitochondria to adapt and become stronger. So a certain amount of stress is good. Chronic stress can definitely affect our mitochondria in a negative way. Insomnia lowers the mitochondria in our body. A good night rest can enhance our mitochondria because we recover. And of course, alcohol inhibits the mitochondria. But on the flip side, you can eat certain things that will increase mitochondria, like phytonutrients. There's a lot of different uh, plant-based chemicals, resveratrol, quercetin, the phytonutrients in green tea and garlic can all boost your mitochondria. Not to mention the dependency on just basic nutrients that support the mitochondria. There's this thing in the mitochondria called the Krebs cycle that maybe you've learned about, and I'll guarantee rarely anyone understood it back then. You'd have to really uh, play around with it to really grasp or wrap your wits around it because it's a very complex um, machinery. But the simplicity is your body's turning food into energy using oxygen. And to do that process, you have to go through a bunch of steps and your body requires B1, B2, B3, B5, and coenzyme Q10 and other nutrients. But those are some of the basic nutrients that uh, support the mitochondria. So if you made it this far, you now have more awareness on what sugar does to 
probably one of the most important parts of your cell called the mitochondria. And getting off sugar is going to be th extremely therapeutic to your overall health because it's something that you can do to actually create health to help bolster your mitochondria versus in our healthcare system, which I'm still trying to find the health in it because we don't really create health, is all about taking all of these diseases that are really metabolic in origin and treating them with drugs, which inhibit the function of your mitochondria. Now, since we're on the topic of sugar, I've created a lot of videos on sugar, but if you haven't seen this one, I think you're gonna find it very interesting. I put it up right here.